I greet you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining by this means. And again, I thank our tech team who apparently know how to um, make electrons go where they're supposed to go and make the audio and video uh, able to be viewed and, and listened to by you. And so um, I believe that the Lord has a word for us from his scriptures to us today on the theme that we belong. I believe there's an encouragement and a strength today for us. Our launch verse is 1 John chapter 3, verse 19. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. I want to read that again. 1 John 3, 19. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather around your word. And I pray, God, that your encouragement and your strengthening will come to us by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we will hear your word, that we'll be uplifted by your word, and that we will have marching orders from our Lord and Savior to be the people that we ought to be and to touch lives in your name because we belong to you and you've called us to belong to one another. So we thank you, Lord, for the scriptures that we're going to look at today. And I pray that our hearts will be open to what your spirit says to each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 From time to time, I've used this statement, God is, God knows, God cares, God acts. We have our confidence in that. God is, God knows, God cares, God acts. There are a lot of pastors who are online now that weren't previously online. And I appreciated something that um, a fellow pastor, Alan Refsland, said in his message last week online. He said, nothing in God's plan has changed. Nothing in God's will has changed. And I thought that was powerful. And that's an encouragement to us that God's got this. And his will has not changed at all because of the circumstances that we're in. I think that the, um, the thought that the Lord has drawn me to in this is that statement belong we belong it's been said that the greatest human need is belonging although that statement comes from the world of psychology it does ring true and line up with what scriptures teach we are God's property he made us he owns us he made us to belong to him God our Heavenly Father but our sins have messed up that relationship and created a separation instead of belonging but through the saving, restoring work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross, the relationship becomes restored. The belonging is mended. The need for belonging is powerful. Our text reminds us that we belong to Jesus, who is the truth. And we know that we belong. And our hearts are at rest in his presence. I think that all of us need to be reminded that our hearts need to be at rest in his presence. With the trouble mounting every day, is your heart at rest because you belong to the Lord? We can know this according to our text. The need for belonging is powerful. It holds families together, even when they're somewhat dysfunctional families. Go ahead and point and wink and high five each other on that one. I can't see you there in your living room, but you know what I'm talking about. The need for belonging is why some people form romantic relationships long before they hardly even know each other. And then when they realize later on how incompatible they are with each other, it all falls apart and then rebound, they quickly repeat it all over again with somebody else. It's like Adele is singing the soundtrack of their life. Um, but the need to belong is so strong that people form relationships. They, they let their heart lead. Let the heart and the mind go together in these kinds of decisions in life. In a negative example, the need for belonging is why young men join gangs that need to belong to something and to someone else. In a positive example, belonging is a powerful bond among our armed forces. If you just look up the term, never leave a brother behind, and you will find stories that will make you trust in heroes again. The need for belonging is why community works. In our world's present crisis, we're seeing in the news and in our neighborhoods, people are coming together with creative ways to encourage one another. We need to belong. And the Word of God has a lot to say about our belonging. Again, our launch verse, 1 John 3:19. This is how we know 
that we belong to the truth. Remember, the truth is not just a concept. Truth is a person. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We belong to him. We belong to him. And we know that we belong. And this is how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Now, there's not a period necessarily there that goes on. And later in this message, we're going to be talking about the fulfillment of that concept in that paragraph in 1 John chapter 3. But first, I want us to consider that we belong to God because he owns us. He made us and he owns us. In Malachi 2.15, in the New International Version, it says, Has not the one God made you? You belong to him in body and spirit. Because he made us, we belong to him. Our bodies belong to him. Our spirits belong to him. He has an ownership of us. We belong to God because he has purchased us with the blood of Jesus Christ. We are bought with a price. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 I'm sorry, for chapter 6, in verses 19 and 20, it says, You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Thank God for that sacrifice that Jesus made for our salvation on the cross. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. I was so blessed as a child growing up in a Christian home. My mother taught Sunday school. And I still remember early on, that she would use the flannel graph method. Betty Lucan's flannel graph. Let me hear an amen on that one. Betty Lucan's flannel graph. And one story that she told that really stuck with me was the story of a boy who made a toy sailboat. And he worked long and hard and diligently to make this toy sailboat. And when he had it completed, he went out to the stream and he was playing with it there along the bank of the stream there in the water and a puff of wind came along and it got away from him and really quickly it was out in the faster water and there was no way that he could retrieve it and what a loss and then sometime later he was walking through town near the shops and there in the window of a store was his boat he'd recognize it anywhere and he went in and he talked to the proprietor of the store he said that's my boat I made that boat and it, it, it got away from me and the proprietor of the store said, well, that may be so, but this is brought to me by somebody who'd found it, and they're selling it on consignment. I can't, I can't give it to you. I can't cut the price at all. You'll have to pay for it. So the boy made his decision that he would do so. And he went and took odd jobs and doing whatever he could do, cleaning this and yard work and whatever, until he finally built up enough money that he was able to buy that boat. And he went in and he purchased that boat at the price that it cost. And as he was walking home, cradling that boat in his arms, he said, you're mine. You're twice mine. I made you. You got away from me, but I bought you back. And that story has stuck with me. And I don't have the Betty Lucan's flannel graph to show you, but um, you get the story, don't you? There's a very much a story um, there that, that we belong to God. He made us. We belong to him. We got lost. We got away from him. And yet he bought us back at the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. We belong to God in Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 9, verse 41, it says, For whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, assuredly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Do we catch that little statement in the middle? Because you belong to Christ. Jesus himself said, You belong to me. There's a belonging. He has an ownership of our hearts and our lives. John chapter 3, verse 29, John the Baptist, when he was pointing out the Messiah, he said, the bride belongs to the bridegroom. Our belonging to Christ is the same as a bride belonging to the bridegroom. There's a bond there. There's a sense of belonging that is that close and unbreakable. In John 15, verse 19, the Lord said, if you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. So that statement, as it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. We don't belong to the ways of this world. We don't belong to the sins of this world, the old nature, the old flesh, the old life, the old choices. We don't belong to that anymore. Now, aren't you glad you're redeemed? Jesus said, I have chosen you. We belong to him instead. In Romans 1, verse 6, it says, you also are called to belong to Jesus Christ. That theme carries on through the scriptures. 
We are called to belong. He has drawn us into himself. Romans 14, verse 8, If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. So are you facing life? Are you facing death? Are you facing, I'm not sure. Are you facing trials? Are you facing victories and triumphs? Whatever you're facing in life, in death, in it all, we belong to the Lord. God has an ownership of our lives through Jesus Christ. Also, we find that we belong to each other in scriptures. Romans 12, verse 5. We in Christ, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Each member belongs to all the others. None of us are spiritual lone rangers and doing it ourselves. We belong to each other. We're in this together. So many times, so many ways, the Word of God talks about how we are the, the flock of God. We are the building of God. We're the temple of God. So many ways of, of describing our unity together, how we need each other. And he has built us that way, that we belong to each other. First Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brothers, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God which lives and abides forever. Oh, there's a lot there. But the basic theme is since we... The Lord is purifying our souls through his spirit. We're obeying in love that command to love one another. We belong to each other. We're incorruptible. You can't touch this. This is the good stuff. This is the good relationship. This is what we're made for, to belong to God and to belong to each other. So if you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling cut off, reach out to fellow Christians. And it's our duty and our joy to help encourage you and let you know that we are a family together of God and that we love one another fervently with a pure heart. Romans 15 verse 14 says, Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brothers, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Did you hear that? Filled with goodness, filled with knowledge, so we can admonish one another. To admonish. To, to point out areas where we can grow together in the Lord. If there's an issue in somebody's life, we find a way through goodness and knowledge, this verse says, through the goodness and knowledge that God has brought from him to us. None of us can claim goodness or knowledge on our own, but as his Holy Spirit builds that and fills us with his goodness and his knowledge, we can then, through goodness and knowledge, we can help admonish each other. We can help each other grow and become more like Christ and fix some of the nicks and dings of our lives and the, our personalities. I remember years ago, as a youth pastor, being a camp counselor with a cabin full of teenagers, teenage boys, and for a week of youth camp. And youth camps um, have come and gone in terms of, of how many people attend. But I remember this from years ago, that we had some boys there that were from our youth group. We also had um, seems to be one or two or three from another youth group that had joined our cabin. And there was one boy, one of the younger ones, who um, was, let's say he was a bit socially awkward. He was a bit of a nerd. He was, um, you know, a little awkward. And some of the other boys were, were just kind of putting him down and picking on him. And I, I got a couple of the older boys aside, I remember this, um, and privately talked to them. And I said, yes, he's a twerp. But he's our twerp this week. So instead of picking on him and putting him down, make him feel welcome and wanted and accepted. And as I recall, they took that to heart. And they, they did try to include him and help him be part of what was going on. And I was encouraged by that. Now, whether we made any difference in that young fellow's life or not long term, I don't know. You know, coolness can be faked temporarily, but twerpness is to the bone. Don't look at me like that. It's been scientifically proven, okay? But maybe there was a lasting effect in his heart that somebody could treat him with kindness, no matter what his personality was like. So um, we are able, through goodness and knowledge, to admonish one another. If we come at it with a battle axe attitude, I'm going to fix you, I'm going to shape you up, that's a, that can kind of grate on people. But if we just come with goodness and knowledge, the Lord has brought good into my life and I want to share the good that God, God's done for me and in and through me. 
So how can I encourage you to walk in the goodness and knowledge of our Lord and Savior? So admonishing one another. We belong to one another. Now there are privileges and responsibilities to this belonging. Galatians 3 verse 29 says, If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Since we belong, we are heirs of all the good things that God has promised in his kingdom from be the beginning to the end. They're ours because we're in Christ. That's one of the privileges of belonging. We're not outsiders. We're insiders, all of us. And we have that family relationship. We're king's kids. We have his, his presence in our life by his spirit. And it reminds us, and also in his word, that we belong to Christ. Therefore, we're Abraham's seed. We're the heirs of the promise. We're in. We're in the best kingdom, the greatest thing that ever has been because it's God's plan. In John 8, verse 47, it says, Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. If you belong to God, you hear what he says. We must listen to the Lord. We must read his word. We must pray. We must respond. If we are going to belong to him, then we have to pay attention to him, of course. So whoever belongs to God hears what God says. In Galatians 5, verse 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Yes, there's a discipline in being a disciple. We must crucify the fleshly desires and the worldly desires. Because he has been crucified for us, we can then crucify the things that would take us away from him. And it's a joy to kill off those things that threaten our relationship with the Lord. So if we belong to Jesus Christ, we've crucified the flesh and its passions and desires. Acts 27, verse 23, God to whom I belong and whom I serve. To whom I belong and whom I serve. If I belong to him, I serve him. So I, I have the promises, I have the benefits of being in this kingdom. And along with that, I hear what he says and I serve the Lord. That's the greatest thing that we can all say is, I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm a child of the King. I belong. I'm in the family. He's my Lord and Savior. And I can serve Him because serving Him is not a grievous thing. Serving Him is not uh, an un un unbearable task, but it's a joy to serve the Lord and to do the things that He does alongside of Him. Galatians 6, verse 10, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. You're in a family. We're to do good. It's one of the responsibilities and privileges in belonging is that we do good to all and especially think about the family of believers. Around you right now, there's probably somebody who needs an encouraging word or even some tangible expression of, of encouragement and, and family relationship. So let's live this out. Let's do good however we have opportunity to do so. So now we return to our text verse in 1 John chapter 3. And it says that we know how we belong. We know that we belong. I want us to take that 19th verse again, but also go a little further through verse 24. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts. And he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. There's the entire, a good solid teaching on the Trinity right there. God the Father has ordered us to believe on his son Jesus Christ and we know that we have this confident walk with him and this belonging relationship with him by the spirit that he has given to us. Do you know you belong or is there a disconnect today? You belong to God but if that relationship is broken or fractured or on and off Receive forgiveness today. It's freely offered. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that we belong to you. You've made us. You own us. Yet our sins have taken us from you. But Lord, you have drawn us back through Jesus Christ in that mighty cross that is our salvation. 
Lord, we pray that you will cause each one of us to refresh and restore our belonging to you and also to reinforce our belonging to one another in you. I thank you, Lord, for your word today and your encouragement. And I pray that your people will rise up in faith in Jesus' name. Amen.